Have you ever vomited 24 times over the course of four hours and felt like your stomach was trying to escape the confines of your body all while on a foreign island? Me too. After puking the first 18 times, I foolishly thought I might have a chance to just wait this mystery illness out, but then I puked six more consecutive times into a plastic bag. This whole ordeal was no tidy affair. Unlike this gentleman, I did not have access to a lovely green bucket, and the urges were so violent that in addition to the plastic bag, I puked on the bathroom floor, bedroom floor, I was puking. After vomit number 24, Belle Keese, the host mother I was staying with and misfortunate person who was holding the plastic bag, was adamant that her downstairs neighbor who owned a car and drive me to the hospital, to which I agreed. Even after taking three years of Spanish in high school and Spanish 201 immediately before going abroad, my language skills were still shit. Poor Orlando, one of the people in charge of our student program, had to meet us at the hospital to translate with the medical staff. Upon arrival, I'm placed in an examination room and the doctor sees me promptly. He tells me to roll over and in my dehydrated delirium, I have absolutely no idea what's going on. So he and the nurses maneuver me onto my side until my butt is facing them. I snap out of my oblivious state real quick. Once I see a needle, the doctor is about to stick in my ass cheek out of my periphery. After what felt like a severe pinch deep in my bum, I thought I was out of the woods. That is, until they rolled me over onto my other side and pulled that half of my shorts down to reveal my other soon-to-be violated cheek. I swear, on all that is holy, this needle was three inches long and all three inches were inserted into the muscle. What was injected into my back door, you ask? A mixture of anti-nausea and pain medication. After this, I'm wheeled to my room and quickly begin to feel better as the meds course through my veins. At long last, no more urge to vomit or poop myself, and no more horrible stomach pain. However, my stomach is still absolutely fucked. I barely get any sleep because nurses came in and out every 30 minutes to check up on me during the night, and I was truly awake after one gave me yet another ass injection. I should also mention I was hooked up to an IV and went through more than three bags of the hydrating solution they gave me. To illustrate how absurdly dehydrated I was, even after all that, my pee was still amber colored. Climbing out of bed and having to roll the IV contraption into a narrow bathroom with a needle tugging at your arm is also not very comfortable. Here's one of my fondest snap memories from the day. Don't ask me how, but in my room, I was able to watch Showtime's Ray Donovan on my tiny little TV, which was odd because I didn't think American television made its way into Cuba. Late the next morning, I walk home with Orlando by my side and all the other students come to visit me, which was incredibly nice. While healthcare is free at the point of service for Cubans, this whole ordeal set me back $130, a price much cheaper still than if this happened to me at home in the good old US of A. I'm not entirely sure what I consumed that made me so violently ill, but I have a few guesses. The first is this mountainous pork burger I was able to acquire for a grand total of $1, which I consumed four days before my symptoms. Second option, and the choice I lean towards, ice cubes. You see, the water in Cuba isn't the safest, and my pampered American gut can't handle the microbes found in it. This is why I had to bring a charcoal filtered water bottle, which enabled me to safely drink the tap water. One night before my powerful series of oral expulsions, I had a drink at a nearby Skyline bar. Inside this drink, innocuously enough, were ice cubes. Such a common sight of ice in my drink did not arise any suspicion at the time. But it is entirely possible these frozen cubes of water came straight from the untreated tap behind the bar, and as I slowly sipped my mojito, more and more of the exotic microbes entered my gut and potentially began to wreak havoc. The recovery was a little rough. I hardly had an appetite and could only eat bland chicken, rice, and veggies for five days before my stomach felt mostly back to normal. A popular way to cook chicken in Cuba, at least from what I experienced, is by boiling it. Secondly, I don't think chickens are harvested in the same factory farm manner as in the US because the coloration was a little different. There was more blood and odd purple discoloration that my once again, pampered American gut was not used to, which did not help my appetite. I know, I was being a little bitch. On the fifth day following my hospital trip, 
We all flew back into Miami, and I was a whole 15 pounds lighter than when I arrived in Havana. Fortunately, I haven't had food poisoning again since, but I came dangerously close during the recent Jeffrey call, which happened after I had almost eaten an entire jar from the tainted batch. I'll probably make another video soon about my other, much more positive experiences from studying abroad because it was great apart from this one episode. Make sure to subscribe and let me know about your worst food poisoning experience below. Thank you for stopping by. I'm out.